All right. So on Monday, I believe it was, we finally had the Durham report released. And it's over 100 pages. So most people have not read it in entirety yet. Some people may have. Uh, some, you know, some people are quick readers. They have speed readers for these specific situations politically and legally to make sure that they are on top of new information that comes out. But essentially, from what's been gathered from the report thus far, and this is obviously not for me reading it, I have not read a hundred and something page document in two days. But essentially, information from the Durham report is coming out uh, confirming that there was a lot of planning as to the release and the limiting of the release of information that came out in regards to Russia, Donald Trump, him being a foreign asset, the limiting of the information coming out about the Hunter Biden um, laptop, you know, and all of the information that we found out about him. Which it may, to a person who's been following this story, sound like a repeat of information and that nothing necessarily new came out, which is true. It's just further evidence backing up uh, what we already knew to be the circumstance. So a lot of people are, you know, acting like this is going to be some big uh, expose or is going to change people's minds and thoughts about the past election. And the fact of the matter is that I don't think that it will. Um, just like all the information that's come out before, like through the Twitter files and things like that. I believe that a lot of people think that it's slowly adding up to something, but I don't know if that's the case. I think that a lot of this information is coming out solely because they don't mind that it's coming out and they might even want some of this to come out to leak, to show what has been done in order to circumvent Donald Trump being the president again or, or ever again or any circumstance like that. And I'm not saying that from a place of uh, crazy conspiracy theorists or, or a super fan where I'm like Trump secretly won and da, da 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 da. I think that Trump's fan base being that weird, the people who said that he really secretly won and Joe Biden was in prison and Donald Trump was in a bunker under the, the White House and he was going to come out on March 30th, all that stuff. Those people are so far in the hole that the average person will never join along with them. And those are the main people who are screaming out about the, you know, election fraud, right? So even if there was actual election fraud that happened, even if there was messed up things that happened during the election that limited um, information that would have influenced people's voting decision to, from actually reaching them about Donald Trump, and Hunter Biden or information that came out saying false things about Trump and his relationship to Russia. Those people are too far gone, man. They're fully checked out of anything that has anything to do with Donald Trump. And honestly, I think that a lot of those people are so worried about his fan base and, and being protected from the crazy people who follow him that I don't think that they are worried. Like, nobody's really worried about solid across-the-board justice being done anymore. They have their position, and then they want to do whatever they can to fortify and defend their position. And laws and principles and morals are secondhand to winning this it's not even a culture war because a lot of people don't view it as that. Like a lot of people are not like we need to save the future generation. That's 
So it's a one-sided culture war, meaning one uh, one side believes that we're in cultural decline and wants to do something in order to reverse or at least circumvent that. The other side is literally afraid. Uh, it, it's made up of a bunch of different types of people, as both sides are. But the main group that I see are people who are just afraid. Like the people who are afraid of the, you know... Um, guns and afraid of Trump and afraid of Trump supporters and all of this stuff are people who are afraid of real like taking responsibility into their own hands and managing their own life. There are people who want a very automated life with universal basic income and everything spoon fed to you from the government. And I'm I'm being slightly hyperbolic here because, you know, I'm sure these people do want their own autonomous lives. I don't think that they, you know, want to to in a pod and eat bugs like everybody always says that they want to do. But a lot of them may be easily coaxed into a lifestyle like that um, versus a life where you move with a little bit more volition and do things according to what you believe life's purpose is. So, it doesn't mesh very well with the making America great again. And these are the people who believe that racism and oppression are these be uh, these gigantic, unbeatable, monolithic structures of oppression in our day to day lives. Well, that's true, but it's ironic how when they give up their power to the government by trusting in them to create laws that protect you know, protected classes of people and help give them um, not financial opportunities, but government subsidized living, government subsidized life, food, shelter, you know, all of these types of things being provided from the government. A lot of people would prefer that if, even if they have to give up a little bit of their personal freedom and choices. That's the big big uh, war that we're fighting here in America. So you have to get through a lot of people's laziness, um, not only their laziness in not wanting to understand or read or pay attention to documents and news articles that come out with information like this, but also the laziness of them not wanting to be in charge, the captain of their own ship, their own life. But people can trick you into thinking that you're not like that. It's all taken care of for you. But then how much do you really want that to be in somebody else's hands? Whether you live or die, how much food you receive, what your living situation is like, you know, I don't think that people think too deeply into these concepts beyond, oh, the government will provide everything I want. Oh, OK, yeah, the government will provide, but it's not necessarily going to be what you want. And I know I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I think that all of this is important and connects back to the releasing of the Durham report because a lot of people aren't going to read it. A lot of people aren't going to pay attention to the information that's been released, just like the Twitter files. Besides those who are legitimately interested, but those who are legitimately interested are not going to take to. They're probably already feeling the way that they did, and this is confirming their thoughts on the situation, which has a doubling effect when they're like, aha, and show this big giant report full of all this convoluted messaging to the average person who's like, you know, I'm not going to read that, but I, I have a feeling that you're being disingenuous because you're weird, you know, right or wrong. I can't blame them for that because it doesn't matter how righteous your message is. If you come to me in a way that doesn't appeal to me, meaning that like, I don't view you as valid because of how you either appear or are speaking. I try to not to do this too often because I know that valuable information comes from everywhere, but it's a natural thing for you to question somebody. It's like somebody trying to do business with you and they're dressed like a homeless person. You're just going to, you know, doesn't mean that they can't, doesn't mean that they're not rich or something like that and just choose to dress that way, but it's going to make you skeptical. Well, that's how people view Trump's fan base. And um, when information like this comes out, I don't think it hits the way that those people want it to. 
that frustration is probably building inside of them too and will manifest itself in some type of way. Will it be healthy? Will it be productive? I don't know. That's why I try and be realistic about the situation and really understand that no matter what happened back then, I mean, keep releasing the information on that, you know, keep, keep, keep letting us know what exactly was done, um, you know, uh, to try and uh, fix these kind of elections or at least the information that comes out and in, in, that would influence them. But do I expect this to be some turnaround moment where Joe Biden gets indicted and is arrested and Hillary Clinton goes to prison, Obama and all this? No, of course not. It's not going to happen. Sorry that I'm coming off black pilled here, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I just think that don't waste too much time focused on trying to shove this into people's faces. Gather what important information that you can, put it together, put it out there, let those who choose to absorb it, absorb it, but really move on, man. Um, get realistic about helping Trump uh, gauge his popularity, meaning making sure that things like what happened in Iowa don't happen again anywhere else. Get outside, talk to your neighbors, see how they feel about this situation, this upcoming election. It's going to take a lot of grassroots work in this uh, election in order to really gauge where everybody is and actually have impactful conversations about new information that are going to change people. And it's one by one, case by case, because sending this out to a group for them to absorb it in their own convenient you know, time span, it's not going to work, man. A lot of people are not going to look at this this point, I feel like I'm repeating the same things. Um, so I'll go ahead and choose to end the video now. But let me know if you feel differently about the Trump, uh, or I mean, excuse me, about the Durham report. Let me know if you think it's going to cause some major change in what you may think that may be. Uh, if you have more information, like if you've read the report or anything like that, and you think that something that I'm saying is inaccurate, please let me know. Because like I said, I haven't read it myself. This is just my reaction to the reaction of the report coming out and what I think will come of it in the future. But it's been awesome talking with you guys. Have a good morning.